Good morning and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Clinton Griffiths. Today is the one year anniversary since SUNUP returned to the airwaves and we've got a great program for you today. Today we're looking at a new potential crop for Oklahoma, a dual purpose grass called TEF. And while many of us here in Oklahoma may have never heard of it before, as SUNUP's Kathy Shelton reports, in other parts of the world, TEF has been around for thousands of years. Teph is believed to have originated in Ethiopia between 4,000 and 1,000 B.C. The seeds were discovered in a pyramid in 3359 B.C. Since then, it has been widely cultivated and is used not only in Ethiopia, but neighboring countries as well. It was introduced to the United States in the late 50s, early 60s, but still largely remains an experimental crop. We caught up with OSU researcher Kathy Desta to learn more about it. It can grow about three foot and uh, then it starts to uh, flower and it's got this panicle actually and each of these are, there are spike, spikelets on this one. Mm -hmm. These are, we call them spikelets here and in e on each spikelet we'll find a lot of florets here and each of these are setting and it's, this crop is self-pollinated, strictly self-pollinated. What do the seeds look like? We have some of them here. They're really small. Yes, yes teff, teff has, uh, obviously it belongs to that gramine group, uh, grasses with tiny seeds generally. But uh, it has, uh, unlike many, it has these two different varieties. You have either brown, uh, a white one or a brown one. And uh, nutritionally, they are not much different except the brown one a little bit more rich in uh, iron. Not only is teff rich in iron, it's also high in calcium, protein, carbohydrates, fiber, and is gluten-free. It can be used in a number of things such as cereal, bread, cookies, and other snacks. This is the first year the crop has been tested in Oklahoma. They're trying to see if it'll grow well in the state's climate. If it does, producers can use it for a summer forage alternative and possibly make a little money from it. Tim Taylor in Noble County wanted to try it out, and a portion of his land was used as a test plot. It's a really easy crop to manage. Uh, I really haven't had any troubles with it. Uh, the only challenge that I could see with it is, is the seed is so small, it, uh, it's kind of hard to, if you almost need special grass seed equipment to get it planted. But other than that, it, it seems, to be, seems to be about the same. The soil bed preparation would be about the same as wheat or alfalfa. Besides the small seeds, there are a couple of other challenges to face. In the field, there are several factors that affect the growth of this crop. Primarily, it's affected by, in, specifically in the southern states, Oklahoma. If you have too much heat, that's going to end up uh, losing some flowers. And like a lot of other crops, you have to deal with the weeds. Weeds are a major problem. One is this crabgrass here. Okay. It is, it is uh, number one problem. And then we got also barnyard grass down here. Uh, this one is barnyard grass. There are a couple of ways to control the weeds. One is to use a herbicide to kill those particular species, or you can plant early, around April or early May, since those weeds don't come in till June. Teff has a yield potential of anywhere from one to six tons per acre, depending on location. More testing will need to be done to get a better idea of potential yields in Oklahoma. Tim says he's willing to give it another shot. Yeah, I'd be interested in trying it again to see how it's going to work and see what the market demand is going to be for it. That's going to, as far as a forage crop, that's going to be my big uh, factor is to see how the market responds to it. If proven successful, it can make for a great niche market. There are immigrants who came to this country from the, uh, East Africa, especially uh, Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Zumba, um, Kenya, and uh, Djibouti. These people, their bread actually comes from this crop. The bread, they make their food called, uh, they call their injera, their, their bread injera. And the injera is actually prepared from teff flour and with some mixture of maybe uh, wheat because of the availability issue. Mm -hmm. In preference, actually everybody prefers to have a clean, neat um, uh, soil uh, uh, teff flour, but it's not available, so they mix it. So they make actually their bread out of that grain, basically. So 
large amount of I think what's produced as a grain in the US and a lot of uh, grain from Ethiopia is imported for this purpose today. It won't come down. Kathy says it'll take at least four more years of testing to see which counties will be able to grow teff successfully, but believes it has great potential for smaller producers in Oklahoma.